citizens, thank you so much for being here, citizens of Bosnia, of this country, both in between, neither. Um, I think that after those three years of war, it's sort of echo before he goes what uh, Bob Stewart just said about the young people. I mean, you know, we, we'll be dead before too long. They've got the country to live through. They want it to stay together. And I think we come together today in the name of the Republic, in the most honorable sense of the word, the Republic, and all it stands for and should mean and has meant for 2,000 years since Plato wrote his book, the Republic of Bosnia. I think that, you know, after those three years, and the nearly 30 years since, it's, it's hard to to know quite, you know, what to think and to be sure of really very little. But I'm still sure for what it's worth of one thing. In fact, I'm more certain than ever that peace is better than war. Yeah. yeah. Especially, especially if you're a citizen of Bosnia and Herzegovina and you know what war is like. And to believe the opposite of that, the, 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 the converse that war could be better than peace, especially if you are a citizen of Bosnia and you know war, is dangerous, mad, terrifying, and also ridiculous. And Milorad Dodik and his cronies are such people because they do believe that war is better than peace, even though they know perfectly well what war is, and that makes them mad, bad, dangerous, and terrifying. There is a spectre across the world at the moment. Brexit, fascism in Eastern Europe, Trump, not wanting to live with the other. Only want to be being and living with your own kind. Just at a time when humanity needs to work together to face the problems such as climate change, pandemic, migration, and so on. Now, this idea that I don't want to live with the other in its latest phase began with Milosevic, Karadzic, and Dr. Karadzic's repulsive term, ethnic cleansing. The idea that I can only want to be with my own, and we will kill you, deport you, legislate against you, rape you, torture you, until we only live with our own kind. It is an abomination against humanity and against God to think in such a way. So, the, the logical, outcome of that. Three years, three long bloody years of war, of carnage, aided, abetted, tolerated by what passes for the international community. 200 miles down the road from Venice at the heart of Europe. Now peace may be better than war, but peace is tough. Peace is hard work. Peace is expensive and it's difficult. And you can have a bad peace and a good peace. And Ladies and gentlemen, Dayton was a bad peace. Agreed. Peace is not just the absence of war. And what Dayton did was to end the war, but never really bring peace in the sense that we and our gods mean. Because so far as the international community concerned, it merely rewarded the aggressors with all they had done, just as the tide was turning in 1995. And some of you here were on that turn of the gyre, heading towards Banja Luka, all wars turned, the Second World War turned at Stalingrad and D-Day, and this one was turning. Land from which you had been cleared, where your relatives, your families, your neighbors had been killed, tortured, and raped, was being taken back. And so far as the three sectarian, narrow-minded little political parties were concerned, Dayton met, gave them what they wanted to be, which was a big fish in a small pond. Very, very dangerous, all of it. Excuse you want me to turn that view? I don't want to. <laughs> so Dayton was a catastrophe, and its signature is share a, a responsibility for what's happening now. It's a direct result of Dayton. And I keep using this word reckoning. Reckoning for the perpetrator of genocide and atrocity is coming to terms with what you've done, admitting what you've done, and making amends. Ladies and gentlemen, after 15 years, of the liberation of Auschwitz, the Beatles were playing in Hamburg, and after 25 years, Willy Brandt made his great famous speech of atonement for what Germany had done. The monuments and the death camp museums in Germany are not being built by the Jews, but by the Germans. What in Bosnia of this? None. Not only none, but worse. In fact, what we have is this revolting cycle 
between justification and denial for 25, nearly 30 years. So that last July in Srebrenica, 19 families were burying the remains, or just a few remains, of their beloved families 26 years after they had disappeared. 26 years, two and a half decades of limbo and faint dying hope for these people. It was just after the commemorations this July of Srebrenica that I noticed these terrifying black armored cars, brand new, great big wheels, nasty things. They were called death spot, adding to the general traffic horror post-commemoration. I thought, who are these? Where do they come from? This is such an intimidating gesture. They must have been imported from Russia or some such. No, they were made in Bielina. And they make a very obvious statement. And they make the same kind of statement we saw across the so-called Republic of Srpska yesterday. A sort of psychotic militarization of society. A death cult. A cult of violence. And this is what a separate, breakaway, so-called Republic of Srpska will look like. It causes us to be here in fear, to plead for the Republic, its legitimacy and unity. There has to be a particular concern that those of you who, across the diaspora, worked and gave all you have to rebuild the houses that you were burned out of, where your families and your friends and your neighbors were raped, tortured, murdered and killed, you survived. You survived and you went back and built those houses. What will be your protection? under an, a, a, a politically, ethnically driven police, military and judiciary, the three pillars of any republic. There are wider questions, wider alarms to sound. We gather here before the parliament, many of whose members were part of the government of Major, Heard, Carrington and others, who shamefully collaborated with, with the genocide in Bosnia. And, and, and also, so please we plead, don't do it again. As Bob just said, keep it together. Keep the Republic united. Yay! The European Yay! Union. The European Union. Bosnia's best bet, probably, in the medium term, is to become a member of the EU, which we've so stupidly left. Even though the EU stood culpably by and impotent during the war. Still does. But what? Exactly. Uh, but what? But what? Dodik is doing is very carefully, very cleverly creating institutional structures that make Bosnia ineligible to join the European Union by separating out its military, judiciary and police forces. And then there's NATO. Act. The front page of the Financial Times this morning has a headline that NATO is now ready to consider combat in Europe against the aggression from Moscow. The article is about Ukraine, but ladies and gentlemen, what Dodik is doing is part of this. This is a brazen foothold in Europe, just as it is in the Ukraine, but even closer, to create a military and police presence which is utterly beholden to Vladimir Putin and Moscow. And the unbearable thing would be for this republic, with its breathtaking beauty, its natural resources, its warm-hearted people, with your droll humor, and thank God for uh, Edin Dzeko, thank God for uh, Damir Imanovic, thank God for the Mire Medunyanin, uh, thank God for the people actually keep this place together for what it really, really is. The unbearable thing would be to have it torn apart yet again because of inactivity by the international community. It is too fragile. It is too beautiful, and it cannot be to be, that it be torn apart yet again while Moscow and Istanbul stand by to pray on what remains. Thank you. God bless you.